In this video, we are going to continue practicing graphing sine and cosine functions with reflections over the x-axis, changes in amplitude, changes in period, and phase shifts happening. Now, be careful. When you have a B value like this and a phase shift that is trying to happen, uh, you cannot leave it in this form. Okay, similarly to the way if I have, um, you know what, let me use the same coefficient. If I have 3x minus 15, you know I could write that as 3 times x minus 5. And uh, if it weren't so obvious, you could look at this and say, okay, he pulled out the 3 and then he divided by 3 and that's where he got the x minus 5 from but you know what you're gonna have to look at it this way if you have something that's not so obvious for example say if I had 3x minus 7 if I still needed to factor out the 3 I could as long as I understand that when I factor out the 3 I must divide by 3 so that would uh, leave me with x minus but then I will have 7 over 3 alright this is the form that we need uh, when we are trying to graph a function I can't just leave it like 3x minus 7 I have to factor out the 3 before I consider what is the phase shift so that's what's about to happen okay so the first thing we have to do is rewrite this so when you see this uh, 3x minus pi, pi is not the phase shift. You have to take the 3 out. You have to factor the 3 out. Uh, and if you factor the 3 out, what you really are doing is you are dividing by 3. So yeah, these 3's cancel, and that leaves you with x. But over here, you have x minus pi over 3. And this is the form that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this down. Um, you know what? I guess I'll just put it right here. So I have uh, y equals negative 2 times the sine of. Okay, now I'm going to put this parentheses, but inside I will have 3 times parentheses x minus pi over 3. All right, so the 3x minus pi became 3 times the quantity x minus pi over 3, as I showed here. Okay, now I can go ahead and do the problem. So we have the a value right here. Uh, that a value tells us that the amplitude is 2. Notice that amplitude is always positive. This negative sign in front is a reflection over the x-axis, so we'll deal with that later. Um, what else, what else, what else? We've got this b value right here. Now that b value leads to the period indirectly. The period is always 2 pi divided by the b value. So in this case, the period is 2 pi divided by 3. All right, so that's it. The two, 2 pi over 3 is the period. Now, there's a phase shift right here. I'll just put PS for phase shift. Uh, there's a phase shift of pi over 3. Now, the direction is the opposite of what you might think when it is minus pi over 3 this is actually a phase shift to the right by pi over 3 and a phase shift is just a horizontal motion a horizontal shift okay now let's go ahead and sketch the graph with this information Okay, so since the amplitude is 2, then 
I'm going to put 2 at the top and negative 2 at the bottom. Since the period is 2 pi over 3, away over here to the right, I'm going to put 2 pi over 3. Then halfway along, if this is 2 pi over 3, this should be 1 pi over 3, or just pi over 3. Now, halfway to that should be pi over 6. Half of pi over 3 will be pi over 6. Now, in the third position, it'll always be 3 times the first distance. So this should be 3 times pi over 6. Uh, but 3 goes into 6 twice, so this would reduce down to pi over 2. Okay. Now, if there was no phase shift, let's think about how the graph would look. This is the sine function. So we know the sine function always starts off at the midline, which in this case is at zero. Um, now, be careful. This negative in the front is a reflection over the x-axis. So whereas usually the sine function goes up first, because it's a reflection over the x-axis, it'll be upside down. So it's actually going to go down first and then back up to the midline and then up to its highest value and then back to the midline. So this is what the graph would look like if there was no phase shift. Uh, however, there is a phase shift of pi over 3 to the right. Now notice that pi over 3 in this problem happens to be one of the values on the x-axis. So that's useful to know because that means that this distance is pi over 3. All right, You can tell because I've labeled pi over 3 right here. That tells me that a distance of two spaces on this graph is a width of pi over 3. So keep that in mind as we do the shifting that we have to do right now. So a phase shift of pi over 3 to the right means I need to take each one of these points and move them to the right pi over 3 which means moving to the right two spaces on this particular graph. So um, consider the very first point. If I move this to the right pi over 3, it's going to land right here. Now the rest of the points should be able to follow the pattern. Um, however, I want to make sure I have room for it. So I'm just going to put some extra marks over here so that there's space. All right, and let me label them because the labeling is really important. So think about it. This is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. So this would be 5 pi over 6. And this would be 6 pi over 6, which of course is just going to reduce down to pi. So now I have space. So I moved my first dot from here to pi over 3. But the rest of the pattern is going to follow. Um, so remember, this is an upside down sine function, so it's going to go down first. So starting from here, it's going to go down and then back to the midline, and then up and then back to the midline. So this is what the final answer should look like. All right, and that is it. Uh, one more time, just for emphasis. Again, we're taking each point and moving it to the right pi over 3. So, for example, this point got shifted over pi over 3, two spaces to the right. Similarly, this dot right here got shifted over to the right, two spaces, and so on for every single point on this graph. All right, let's move on to number 24. 
Now here again, I have a B value right here, and there's some type of a phase shift happening, but you have to be careful. The phase shift is not pi over 3. You're going to have to factor this out. So one more time, if I had um, 2x minus, um, let's say, 12, you know I could factor out the 2, and then I would have 2 times the quantity x minus 6. And if it was not so obvious, you could say, oh, well, I took out the 2, and to find out what went on the inside, I divided by 2. That's how I got x minus 6. See, 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now, you could do that same process if you had something that wasn't so obvious. For example, if I had 2x minus 11, I could still pull out the 2, but if I want to think about what goes on the inside, uh, I would definitely have to say to myself, all right, if I'm pulling out 2, then I'm going to have to divide each of these by 2. And uh, that would leave me with 2 times the quantity x minus. And then I would just have to write 11 over 2. So that's what is about to happen right now. So right now, I have 1 half x minus pi over 3. But I cannot leave it like this. I must factor out the 1 half. So I need to have that 1 half outside of parentheses to be able to read the equation properly. Now, if I'm going to put that 1 half out front, if I want to know what to put inside the parentheses, well, I need to divide each of these by 1 half. Now, these will cancel out, and I will just have x minus. But the question is, what is pi over 3 divided by 1 half? Well, I'm hoping you know that uh, pi over 3 divided by 1 half, uh, if you want to divide by a fraction, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So this would be the same thing as pi over 3 times 2. So that's going to give us 2 pi over 3. So we will have 1 half out front, but then on the inside we will have x minus, and this will be 2 pi over 3. So rewriting the equation using this new technology, we will have y equals the sine of, okay, now I'm going to write this. So I have my 1 half, but then I have my x minus 2 pi over 3 on the inside. All right, this is the form that you must write the equation in in order to see the phase shift properly. Okay. So looking at this purple version of the equation, I see the a value would be right here. And uh, so there's no number there. That means the amplitude is 1. So that's nice and simple. Now the b value is right here. I have a b value of 1 half. Now that will indirectly give me the period because remember that the period is 2 pi divided by the b value which means that the period is 2 pi uh, divided by 1 half, which means that the period is 2 pi times 2, which means that the period is 4 pi. So the period is 4 pi. Now the phase shift. There is a phase shift of 2 pi over 3. phase shift of 2 pi over 3. Now, the minus 2 pi over 3 actually means that this is a shift to the right by 2 pi over 3. This should be enough information for us to sketch the graph. So let's go. All 
Okay, the amplitude is 1. So I'm going to go up to positive 1 and down to negative 1. The period is 4 pi. So way over here somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and put 4 pi. All right, um, so that's the length of one period. Now if I go halfway, then of course that'll be 2 pi. If I go half of that, that should just be pi. So that means right here should be 3 pi. Now, for the moment, I'm going to ignore the phase shift and imagine what the graph would look like without the phase shift. Um, so this is a sine function. So the sine function starts off on the midline, and then it goes to its highest point, and then back to the midline, and then to its lowest point, and then back to the midline. So this is what the function would look like if there was no phase shift. So I need to take each one of these five critical values and slide them uh, 2 pi over 3 to the right. Okay. Now pi over 3 is 1 third of pi. 2 pi over 3 is 2 thirds of pi. So when we say that we're going to shift 2 pi over 3 to the right, um, we're shifting 2 thirds of pi. So here's pi right here. So I'm going to be shifting two-thirds of this distance. So I'm just mentioning that so we have a rough idea of how far over we have to go. So I'm going to go more than half way, more than half of a um, space. So I'm going to have to do that each time. So I'm going to put a mark more than halfway over from each previous mark. So see this mark here? I'm going to go more than halfway. See this more than halfway. Okay, um, you know what? I'm going to need another mark so I know where I am. Okay, 3 pi, 4 pi, this would be 5 pi. And again, I'm going to go more than halfway. Now, it is critical that I accurately label each one of these marks that I just made. The first one is easy because it's 2 pi over 3 to the right. So, of course, this green mark right here is simply 2 pi over 3. Um, now, what about this one? Well, it started from pi, and then I went 2 pi over 3 to the right. So, the question is, what is pi plus 2 pi over 3. Well, this would be like having 3 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. So that would be 5 pi over 3. So that's what this is. This must be 5 pi over 3. All right, what about the next one? OK, I started from 2 pi and I moved over 2 pi over 3. So what is 2 pi plus 2 pi over 3? Well, if I make this a denominator of 3, okay, so basically I'm multiplying by 3 in the numerator and denominator. So this is 6 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. So that's going to be 8 pi over 3. So this mark right here is at 8 pi over 3. Okay, what about the next one? All right, look, I started from 3 pi and I added 2 pi over 3. So what is 3 pi plus 2 pi over 3? Um, well, let's make these like denominators, shall we? So this will make 9 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. So that is 11 pi over 3. So this should be 11 pi over 3. Okay, what about the next one?
Okay, this one started off at 4 pi over 3, and then I moved over 2 pi over 3. So the question is, what is 4 pi plus 2 pi over 3? So let me multiply by 3, so I have like denominators. So this will be 12 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. So this will be 14 pi over 3. So this should be 14 pi over 3. And that is all we need. Okay, so now we can go ahead and sketch the graph. So remember, these pink dots represent what the graph would have looked like without any kind of a phase shift. So we are supposed to take each one of these points and move them 2 pi over 3 to the right. And we've already showed where that will land using these green marks. So if I take this first point, and move it 2 pi over 3 to the right, it's going to land here. Now, all of these points are going to do the same thing. But really, I can just focus on the first point, and then I can go ahead and begin to do the pattern of the sine function. All right, um, just like the pink dots go up first and then down, I'm going to do that starting from here. So um, I will go up first. All right, and I'm lining it up with my new green mark. And then I'm going to go back down to the uh, midline, right at this green mark. And then I'm going to go down to its lowest point, which is right here below this green mark. And then back up to the midline again on this green mark. So all of my five critical values or on the green marks or, or over the green marks that I created. So this will be the final answer. Okay, there it is. Look, one more time, let me emphasize this to you. In each case, I took a point and I just shifted it over 2 pi over 3 to the right. Um, so, for example, this point, if I shifted it 2 pi over 3 to the right, it landed here. At this point, I shifted it to the right. This point, 2 pi over 3 to the right. This point, each point simply shifted 2 pi over 3 to the right and that's what gave me this new graph. So that was it for number 24. And uh, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to stop it right here.